So today's tutorial will be focusing on using Onshape and reverse engineering a common household object. In this case, it's going to be a peg. Uh, to do this, we're going to first have to measure the peg as many dimensions as we can. I'm sure we'll miss some. We're going to measure the length, the width, the height, and certain features. So maybe the diameter of um, certain cuts, uh, cylindrical cuts, and heights of certain features. As you'll see later on, I actually did miss quite a few. So you actually have to measure your own peg and you can do this while you're using on shape. But just to get started, I measured the first few in um, just using a ruler and then I used uh, Google drawings to annotate. From there, I'm gonna open up on shape and I'm gonna select a plane. I like to work on the top plane to start with. I'll select that and I will hide the other planes just so it's a bit simpler. Uh, when drawing a shape, the first thing we're going to do is create a, the largest possible shape. Um, imagine you were a sculptor, you want to create that original uh, block and to do that I'm going to make a rectangle 72 millimeters by 10 millimeters, representing the um, largest dimensions of my peg. Now before you move on, make sure you are using millimeters. You can find this uh, near the on shape icon in the top left corner. There's three lines. You'll be able to navigate there to locate um, the dimension option. You'll then be able to dimension your shape by pressing the D button or locating in the taskbar the dimensioning tool. Next, you'll simply be able to, as you can see, I've already gone ahead, you can create a three-dimensional object by extruding this shape um, using the tool you would have tried last lesson. Next, you need to start cutting away components of the peg. If you look at the shape of the peg, I've started on the angled component and I've measured that it needs to be cut from one millimeter in height up to five millimeters and the length of that cut will be 30 millimeters. I know I've got 40 millimeters there, but I realized that was a mistake pretty quickly. We will create the right dimensions. I'll also ensure that is uh, complete, as in it's a complete shape that I can cut, and that will allow me to cut away that material above. You can simply do this by selecting uh, the corners, as you see there, connecting it to the line, then the top right hand corner, and then reconnecting to the dot and bottom dot there. That creates a shape that I can select and extrude. Making sure I am taking away and removing rather than adding, and there's my first extrude. That is a process I'm going to follow with uh, for most of the time and it's going to be quite straightforward one other tip is to ensure you select the correct face then you can right click and make the view normal too this will allow you to see the shape front on and therefore draw uh, any kind of cut you want uh, perfectly I haven't done it here I probably should have but you'll see I might amend that just so I can see it a bit more clearly now you'll notice I am dimensioning everything as much as possible. This is so I can accurate, accurately copy my peg shape. During this process, I was constantly measuring each distance. Um, and that way I can be sure that it's gonna be exactly as the peg is. And to do this, you are pressing either that tool at the top you just saw me press or pressing D. Pressing D, then clicking the two points maybe the two sides or the two points that you want to dimension and therefore you can write down how far apart they are, the radius of the circle, things like that. Now from this point on I use three main tools. I am dimensioning, I am obviously sketching, dimensioning and then I will extrude. Within the sketching parameter I will either be drawing straight lines creating rectangles or using a three-point arc as they are the three features uh, required to draw the peg. 
Uh, you can watch as I go here, quite simple tools. I create a sketch on the side uh, face of the peg. And after I complete each sketch, I use the extrude tool to cut it away. Consistently using the same method, I sketch and extrude so I can make sure I'm on the right track. At this point here, I wanted to check out how I was going. So I did a quick comparison with the images of my peg uh, and how I was going so far. And I wasn't too, I was quite impressed. I was happy with how it's going. It looks like my um, dimensions all look pretty accurate. Uh, the only thing I, is I need to extrude that semicircle uh, quite soon. To make my edges match a bit better, I'm going to use a new tool called chamfer. That essentially just means we're sanding off and rounding off edges um, to a certain radius. So if I want quite a small radius, so it's not such a sharp curve, I'm going to use one millimeter and that just gives my uh, product a better finish rather than having sharp edges, which is what you find uh, is done with most products. Remember to make things easier, we select the view normal too. Um, this allows us to work in that uh, on that face and therefore I can cut now on a different uh, face. I'm going to create that sketch on that new face. Um, I might actually work from the back this time. So I'm going to select normal two and I get this view. At this point I am going to make three rectangular cuts. Um, after measuring my peg I noticed there were four plastic components and three spaces all of equal width. I know that my total width is one centimeter, so I had to divide 10 millimeters or one centimeter by seven, and that's how I ended up with 1.42. So I know that I have four plastic components or four whole components of 1.42 width, and three uh, gaps that I need to extrude out of 1.42 width. Go all the way to the top, and then I'm going to use a new tool, which is very handy when doing things like this, called the Linear Sketch. And this means I can copy an item. As you see, I'm going to do a linear pattern rather. I'm going to copy that sketch. And now I can simply uh, add multiples of it in a certain uh, direction. So this way I'm going to do it on the x-axis. I want to have three other cuts. Which I'll keep there and then I'll make sure they, they are dimensioned properly. This is a very handy tool and I'll use it a few more times in this. Once I'm happy with the position of these three sketches I'm going to select all three and extrude cut them again. Uh, measuring correctly I need to make sure they are going to the right depth uh, which I'll show you in a second but um, I'm cutting into obviously the shape so I'm removing and then I need to choose the right depth. Uh, making sure you're measuring constantly against your peg to make sure it all looks right. At this point, I think I went a bit too deep so I had to reduce the depth of my cut. Now from the other end of the peg, I had to do the same thing again. Uh, this time the dimensions were slightly different um, but I made up for that uh, through measurement and therefore my cut will look slightly different. The same process again. Uh, this time I won't use the linear pattern because the pattern is not consistent. So I had to draw all four of these rectangles individually. Now to add the two elements that actually stick out from the peg that I've created so far, I've simply chosen the top face. Um, I've drawn two rectangles in the sketch feature and then I've extruded them upwards 4.5 millimeters as that's the additional height these two features or elements have above the normal part of the peg. Um, sometimes it's easier to leave items such as this to the end and add them on rather than cutting around them completely. So you have to use your judgment on is it easier to cut or add certain components um, and you can normally tell depending on the complexity of the part. Okay, at this point, so once we've chamfered off the edges of that little extra compart component, 
uh, making it nice and smooth as the peg looks like. We're going to go onto the underside. There's a little cutout um, for the spring that would need to be added. This is simply two millimeters wide and 1.4 mil millimeters from the edge and approximately two mil deep. So I'm going to add that quickly now. And then I will add one more element to the bottom of the peg, which is for the grip. Once again, I'll use the linear pattern tool to do this, creating a rectangle, multiplying it by seven all the way across uh, using the linear pattern tool. And then this will allow me to uh, replicate that all the way across. I will use the extrude tool and add, or actually subtract some material from our part. And you'll see that the, uh, the lines will be cut out all the way down. It's not very deep, so it's only about one millimeter. The final little component is a little bit of texture at the end. Same process again, using the linear pattern tool uh, to make this cross hatching at the end and then you'll see it actually looks um, quite detailed. Now the final step to see how your masterpieces come together is to actually bring two of your parts together to actually make a peg. Um, you wouldn't always have to do this if you just create one simple part but with a peg being made up of two plastic components that are both exactly the same uh, we can and uh, you'll see Using the tools at the top, you might need to do some investigation. Or if you simply click on the part, you'll see some controls. You can rotate, you can move them in certain dimensions. So the X, Y, Z coordinates. Um, you can move them up, down, left and right and rotate them um, certain, certain angles to match up exactly how you want. I've done this nice and quickly. There's also ways where you can connect certain faces um, and we'll look into that a bit more deeply later. But for now, if you just want to paste in two components, so it's simply inserting two components like I've done, and then see if you can bring them together uh, just simply by moving these parts. Once you've done that, you've completed your peg. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but see how you went. See if you can take a screenshot from a few different angles and then compare it with your um, peg from home.